Ophelia Maalum is the manager of a small village cooperative. Today, she's buying boxes of soap, sardines, milk, sacks of rice, flour, sugar, and other goods for their poor. By buying in bulk from another co-op in the town center, she gets these goods at a cheaper price. The truck is full, and Ophelia and the other co-op members have nowhere else to sit but atop their goods at the back of the truck. Ophelia's village is only 10 kilometers from the town center, but the ride home takes so much longer because of bad roads. In the summer, the trip is hot and bumpy, and when it rains, the roads are even worse. <laughs> With the women and their precious tray of eggs safely out of the truck, the driver attempts to cross the road again. Seventy percent of the Philippine population live in the countryside, yet roads connecting villages to towns are generally in a sorry state. Villagers who bear the cost of transporting goods to and from their farms are hit badly, but with little help from government, they have to rely on their own resources. The road repair is soon over, and the driver tries once more. of getting off the truck to push it across mud holes and getting on again is repeated thrice on the rough trail to Tikal. Finally, the journey is over. The village co-op is still a few meters away, but this is as far as the truck will go. Ophelia and the rest have little choice but to carry the goods to their co-op on foot. Tikal is a small barrio in Malita. Most of the people who live here are Tagakaulo tribal people who grow coconut, coffee and corn. Because the village is difficult to reach, it used to be easy for traders to sell consumer goods at exorbitant prices until Ophelia and her neighbors put up a co-op. So, meeting, meeting, me. So, we are going to hang on. See, I'm going to have a lot of money. 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 At cheaper costs and sell these with a reasonable markup. They can also repack goods in quantities poor farmers can afford.
exchange for her small sack of coffee beans, this old woman gets a few kilos of rice, a pack of sugar, and some dried fish. That's more than she ever got when private traders were the only ones who sold goods in this community. Pinugdanan pag yun sa karang 5,000 pesos nga starting capital na mo, wala pa'y building. Silbi, hipos, lad-lad, pagkabuntag, hiposon, pagkahapon, yung aron, hipos na. Kunya, din yung sinaamong mga kumprada pa. Ang among bugas, isa kasako. Ang among tinapa, din yung sina. Asukar, tunga lang sa sako kay kulang man ang among kapital. But lack of capital did not stop them from putting up their cooperative. First, they got a 15,000 peso loan from the mother co-op in the town center. Then they contributed what little cash they had in a tiny share capital box. Finally, they offered what they had in plenty, labor and coconut lumber to build a store, a warehouse to keep their harvest, an oven for drying their coconuts, and a training center where they hold pre-membership seminars. Today, the co-op has over 65 members, and more are joining after these seminars. The co-op has become a hub of activity in the community. Almost everyone in the village buys basic necessities here and sells whatever is harvested to the co-op. Before the co-op was formed, farmers could only sell their crops to private traders. Because the road to the town center was bad and the farmers did not have warehouses and were perennially in need of cash, traders could dictate how much they were going to pay for the farmers' products. Often, farmers got a raw deal. Then the co-op was organized, offering farmers higher prices for corn, charcoal, and copra. When the harvests came, nearly everyone sold to the co-op. The farmers not only got more from the co-op, it also helped them recover mortgaged coconut lands. Today, with the volume of goods that it transacts, the co-op has amassed assets of 200,000 pesos in just two years, a miracle of sorts for Ophelia and the other villagers who started with a 15,000 peso loan from the mother co-op in the town center. of the Malita Multipurpose Co-op. Gin, kumusta na ang presyo, Gin? Bagsak taro, madam. Bagsak? Pwede bagsak taro. Mga 7.40 na siya, madam. 7.40. Ayan, kaicheck daw ako sa ako, ha? Check sa ako sa pita. Hold on, hold on lang din, Chris. Chris, kaning monitoring ko karoon sa Copra, Chris. Pakimonitor daw din, Chris, ang presyo sa Kuala Lumpur, Rotterdam, o sa Malaysian Ringgit, kung unsa yung hitabo sa Copra. Uh, sige, start daw sa Rotterdam. Pila ang nag-down man daw, ingon sa Cargill. Pinaang ko ang dinakaroon, go. Uh, ang Rotterdam nang down by 5 US dollar sa Kuala Lumpur. The co-op no longer sells copra to local traders. Bypassing middlemen, it deals directly with a trading conglomerate in the international commodities market. This way, the Malita Co-op gets more for its copra, enabling it to offer higher prices to farmers. That is the, why we have a radio communication. Communication is very, very important to us, not, not, not only to us, but I believe that we will never win a war without communication. <laughs> Colette looks at her work at the Co-op as an economic war waged against poverty. Big business used to take advantage of the co-op's remoteness to keep it in the dark about world market prices. Now the co-op is able to play their game. Because you would imagine we are on a very, very remote area and then 
how come you know the dollars and all? No? <laughs> so it's through communication through the radio. This is very important to us, dispensable. Follett decides when to sell their copra and how much is to be sold in the global market, a critical task where a few minutes delay in decision-making could mean a few cents drop in the international price of coconut oil. It doesn't seem much, but a few cents translates to a million pesos when trading tons of coconut oil. Anyway, hold on, tango for the information, Charlie decide. Apart from copra trading, Follett also oversees the operations of their grocery store and credit union. The co-op assets now total 11 million pesos. With what I have shown, in fact, uh, others would not believe that it's a little woman doing this job. And uh, I said also, I'm not really conscious that I'm a woman. I am conscious that I'm a person doing this job. That's why when I, I would say that, ah, babae na din kaya. I tend to react because I'm a woman, I can do this job, no? Follett has been general manager of the Malita Co-op for six years, a clear indication of the member's faith in her competence. Inistadihan talaga namin kung ano talaga itong business activity ng cooperative. So nagiging successful kami sa business side of it. At that point naman, nakikita namin na masyado yata tayong ano, we were so engrossed with the the business aspect of our cooperative. And then we said, well, let's stop muna, look and maybe let's find out kung ano talaga itong cooperative. Kasi nakikita namin, para nang negosyo yung hinaharap namin. No? So maybe, parang wala nang meaning. No? Parang sa akin, I think this is a meaningless group. No? Kung magninegosyo, magninegosyo na lang tayo ng personal. No? So I think this is not what the cooperative is. May malaking kulang. No? So yung cultural aspect, yung advocacy aspect, yung socio-political, medyo nakalimutan, no? So, nakagawa kami ng vision noon. So, the vision was total human liberation and development. Out of this vision of total human liberation and development emerged some serious soul-searching about the social responsibilities of the co-op. Among the questions raised were gender issues in the co-op. Kasi pag-uusapan natin ang development, kailangan magkaka-partner-partner tayo. So dito naman sa partnership, kailangan naaalis yung, naaalis yung mga sinasabi natin yung mga gray areas na nakakaputol sa mga relationship. So nakikita namin gray area ngayon, itong, sabi nyo, bakit may mga question itong women involvement, parang kini-question. Uh, first thing, nag-wonder ako, bakit ba sa board of directors puro lalaki, no? Why? <laughs> and then, but I was there as a woman, in, insisting, asserting, no? But I am glad to find out also that uh, our men are open also to this kind of change, no? Halimbawa, yung mga board of directors namin, they're very much open, no? This openness led the board to approve a program to organize women and help them set up co-ops. Nadarda Pedroza is the community organizer of the Malita Co-op. She's on her way to Ofelia's village in Tikal, together with her four-year-old son, Mark. Ganit, kaya sa itong sitwasyon, karoon nga, 
mahal gani ang tanan ya kung bana lang gani ang pagigan di sujud maski na ko personally na isip gyud ang pari na kay bana ra imo taba ako tanan gyud muligo so una mas ka inani karaget andalan mo ya po ning traka di ko muling ko diri kay batsi ka ibasi ka pagana bahat at ko sa front tapos hawiran na ko puntian hawiran na ko padiri ya ko na ya gawasa ay grabe mo di kaiso tandalan di sujud ay tanan diri na binabaha di ko pata agi da yun ko may laing dala nagian Impression din ako dari, paluin ni lugar ay mga depressed area. So, pero nakita na ako ba nga, nakita na ako mga babae, mga magsuri-suri dari, tuha, tulog. Pinakada ko ng lima. Umabot ko dari, di ka kita babae mga isin mo. Karun, makita na ka nga, alam ka ito sila ng socially involved na kanil sila. So, sa mga kalihukan, kita sa puop, panawagan sa puop, may seminar. Ang expectation ni mo 20, mabot pa na 40, times 2 na siya. So kung patawag ka na si Mina, muna yung anak, ang expectation na yung mga times to ang daghan na kayong nadasig na yun sila gani. As Medarda relates, this bustling co-op in Tikal started with only five women, organized under the Women in Development Program of Malita. And the men saw how this store run by women eased their economic burden. They joined the women's group and turned it into a village co-op. Soon after, the women realized that the co-op brought not only economic benefits, it also changed the way their husbands related to them. Sa o naman kung panahon ang ang babae, kung baga, ingon nila sa balay, sa bata, sa bana, o, ah, upat ka ba? Balay, bana, bata, ano ito, isa ka ba? Banig! Nga. Gamayng lakaw sa asawa, labi na na i-seminar. Ito ang pag-abot away. Sa pagkakaroon, murag wala na. Wala na. Murag na wala na. Na-educar na sila. Sa kaniyad ko, kung doon na i-seminar, pag-abot sa balay, masuko ang bana. Ano na doon kayo? Uli. Masuko kay Kasagaran mang gutong una, naandan mang gut sa mga bana, nga dili palakaw-lakawan ang mga asawa. Nagin lang permaminti sa balay. Nagabantay bata, tigluto. Itong ingon ni Bidars, ganiha nga. Upat kabi. Bata, banig, <laughs> sapat to. Yeah. Moto nga, di ka na pagtukod sa ko, murag. Nadasig po ang mga kababainhan. Kay naidukar sila, kanya apil na po sila ang mga seminar-seminar. Hantun na dani na po ang ilang bana, nag-enjoy na sila sa amua din ni, matabang na sila sa amua. Edgar is Ophelia's husband. He is often in the co-op helping Ophelia with chores. As the co-op got bigger, Ophelia's work also grew. Edgar learned to help his wife, not only with co-op work, but also with house chores. Uh, sayo sa buntag, magmatakog sayo, ako'y manglaba, si Edgar ang magluto. Si Jol, may trabaho ba? Uh, sa, sa nagaluto siya, pagkaon na mo, nagapakaon na po siya baboy. Yan ang galamba na po ko din ha. Kuman akong laba, abriyan na po ang tindahan. Sa mga karoon, 60 plus pa lang ni Sila, mga member in good standing, may ladlungon. So po yung tanga, ang pangaampang lantaw, ang entire pitikal, may mo siyang membro. So proud po ng mga babae, nga kami good ang nag-initiate. So, ang women good mo ay nag-initiate, ano eh, pagsugod. 
I grew up in a family na I saw my mother and my father na equal talaga yung relationship, no? So, sabi ko, for me, it was not an issue. But later on, when I was involved with uh, tung isang project namin, itong tinatawag namin, ano, Malita Cooperative Children's Program, so I was closely involved with women. And then I saw na meron palang mga oppression, no? Because, for example, I saw Nini, one time, pumunta sa bahay, and then she was crying. I said, why, Nini? Why are you crying? And then she said that her husband was pounding her, then she was almost raped, something, no? Something like that, and the children were following. So, at that time, I was really wondering, meron pala itong ganitong klaseng issue, no? Because it was out of my experience, and then I was so engrossed with with the de debit and credit of our accounting that I did not have time to think about it until I saw that concretely ba. Ang lihok na ako sa kanil malagi, gampat yun ang buntag pa sa'yo. Mutak ang nalil sa kanil, mudagan dito sa taas kay paghipos, kay biyaan lang, hindaanan, murag hipos niya. Pagkang balik ka po diri, niya sa'yo murag ka, ano, ato na po sa silong, magsituyok-tuyok ka niya, ato na po manilhig, ano, niya mag... mag... pagkahumanan ko gloto, ano eh. Ang ato na po sa tubig, kalos. Niya mangita pa yung lalog sa baboy, kaya maglalog sa baboy, mag... ano, palutuon gani, pare pagkaon sa baboy. Tindahan ang trabaho. Pero yun, Ana, kinang kinabuhay ka daghanan nga ni? Oo, na itong unang panahon, nga di pa mo tabang amung bana. Muna ay, kuhan, tanan-tanan trabaho amung ajun ni. Pwede yung maka, kuhan, kaya ang bana na mo, tuwa naman po dito. Kuhan, sige lang ka. Patang mo naman po din sa buhay ka layo. Ang amung bana, itong unang panahon, gikan sa bukay, kamura na ilang ilang trabaho, wag bukay pag abot rin. Magmanda raw kapi ang sapatin na kami magkapuliki, may dagan-dagan ang mga iandap sila ha. Niya, magkakuan ana, eh humanin lang inom ang kapi, magdutong nga ito, ano mga kabalayan dito, ana, niya mag, na ay mag-inom ang tubato, ana sila nag-inom. Niya, maulit na lang po na pag-ulit na parte hubuga. Ano na? Niya, kung sa maitik ko, ano, para hubuga ni? Away. Iba mo kasi nagtanay. Kay, mo, istorya ka, magpasabot ka sa ginagmay mo. Mo singkam ganit lang siya. Mauna yung panghitam, hitabog ganit sa mga munong sukol po ko. Niya, huwag di mga kukasukol ka ng sumbag-sumbag. Ako hindi ang mga balay akong pumahin ko ba. Wala ko buka akong anak. Ito yung kinamanghuran itong babae ganit nga taas o buho. Kamaglisod. Wala mo yung kuan ba? Kanang ay... Wala mo kaya 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 man bumini at tumang uma lagi. Dari rami sa balay. Murag, aguantaho na lang po siguro kay mo may servisyo ka na o mga anak. Mag-unsa din ha. Sa mga kubugas, ilaw nun. Nagungkal na ako. Iklaro daw nang ba? Nga nung, sige magpanganak ang mga babae nga ni Santo. Hindi man may pasuroy-suroy yun. Hindi man may tanaw na mo ng mga kuan din na kalingawan. Murag, kaduhan murag dili po. Kinaya sa babae na tumagsuroy-suroy o ganang mga... Yung ta disco, anak karun kayo na may disco, di ni katung sayawan gani. Pero nadalan po kuna ito sa mga nitibo kay nitibo mo na akong bana. Niya, o, sa gani ang ilang gusto, mo po yung tumanon kay... Niya, ikado ha? Murag dili po may kasuro dyan kay sigilag ka ng anak, bata gani, lisod pagdala. Yung magdala may naipatay yung diri anak on. Ibutang diri ang bata. Niya, kapo yung mga kayo magsigdala dala niya, kung saan ako pagsuro eh. Yung po yun. Sa imong tanaw, sa ipiktuan na nga, dili ka makasuroy-suroy, o ka ng ibang babae, nga dili makasuroy-suroy, sa ipiktu. Murang gula, dyan, mag, di, dyan makita, ah, na, nang, murang gula, kay higala, gani, anang hitabo, ah. Kaya wak mong kay ika-istorya-istorya ng mga lain-lain tao, eh, mo haraman yung pamilya. Nga, murang gula, eh, mga problema, wala yung mga, sa akin, mga tapaglunan. Ano. Wala kay kasumbungan sa problema, kaya dalas imong bana, niya imong bana, o maila imong bana, o mong sabot. Niya, gili mong sabot, di away, mamputo. Hindi na ako ni Malunda na malay bahaw o iginit lang na ako ni akong bahaw. Nang Sidin's story echoes in many homes across the Philippine countryside. Bound to house chores and child rearing, women like Nang Sidin do not earn any money. This makes it easier for husbands to leave them out of any decision making, a situation the Malita Co-op hopes to change. Ginirise ang mga membro sa kuok. 
Ang ato manggung uh, principles operatiba naman liya ngayon nga kaangayan. Kung di na ito i-genderize ang lalaki o babae, magawas mo na karong dili, wala ang kaangayan. Nga naman, tungod kay, mapakita mong nga pong mulabaw ang lalaki kaysa babae in terms sa kanang decision making, kung sa talaw ni mong sa kuop, mostly ang mudaog ang lalaki man dyan. So kung genderize na sila, baga, baga makita ang men o women, o ang babae o lalaki, baga shoulder to shoulder ang ilang responsibility. After two years of organizing work in this community, Nang Siding and the other women noticed changes that came little by little. Changes in the way they looked at themselves, the way they related to their husbands, and the way their husbands related to them. Ako ni Adto, sa kaulang mo ako, an ang kuob. Ako sa kuk ni Gabo, akong bana, di siya masugot nga magawas-gawas, di siya masugot nga mo pangkod mga bisita mo at ubang. Pero may natulog sa balay niya, mag-away ni Ana, kaya di lagi ko niya pa, pa gawasun. Niya, nasasalamat ko sa kadugayan, akong ihangyo siya, kaya nanay gi-organize nga ko, ako siyang ihangyo. Nga dili siguro maayo, ganaon lang ko niya mo, nga sige lang ko niya mo prison sa panimalay. Niya, sige na akong istorya siya, bisag buwa siyang kasabot, akong ipasabot sa hantod-hantod. Sa may seminar, ako siya po ban-uban. Kaniya to ba na ang mga desisyon, pero pagkakaroon, Hasta kaming mga babae, mo desisyon po. Kaya hindi may makauyon sa ilang desisyon. Ang saan man na, kinahanglan magka usag yun ang among mga plano. Ni Anto, morang maul... Doon ako ang pagkaulaw ni Anto. Ibang pukutig istorya o ka ng mga dagong tao, mga problema, di ko kaanti ko mo. Muhangyo gani nga matabangan ko. Pero sa panahon nga, nakasimila na ko anang kuan nga, di ay angayan nga kitang tao. Maulaw po sa itong isa ka tao. Morang ang tigo na kumoto bang umiyor. And as Nang Siding and the other women gained more confidence, they found themselves doing new things. Before the gender trainings, they never worked in these farms. Now the women in this village share their husband's burden of earning outside the home, while the men learn to share their wives' burden of doing housework. Kasi ang gusto namin talaga, what, what we really want is, yung the woman is not treated as an object, or as a helper or what, but she is really a partner. Even in the home, she is a partner. In the community, she is a partner. The Tagum Cooperative, one of the biggest in the country. This co-op is owned by 6,000 members, 65% of them women. Dolores de la Piña. Today, the co-op has assets reaching 94 million pesos. This is the opening sequence of an animation film produced by the United Nations. Entitled Impossible Dream, it shows a typical day in a woman's life and her dream of seeing things change at home. This film is shown in all the pre-membership seminars of the co-op and elicits different reflections from viewers. <laughs> Every month, about a hundred people attend these seminars. Here, they not only learn the principles and policies of the co-op, they also learn the basics of gender sensitivity. How the co-op integrated gender consciousness in its programs is a story in itself. A story that began in the boardroom. There are seven members in the co-op's board of directors, five men and two women. They decide much of the co-op's policies, thrusts, and budget. In 1990, when programs for women were first proposed in board meetings, the men objected. So, Tungod kay ang isyo nga gipakita. One way ba? Supak ko sa kanang programa sa WID. O 
Kaya nga nung nisupak ko, ang ilang isyo, one way, one-sided. Ang ilang gipakita sa television, nga ang babae gidaog-daog. Okay. May inquire sa siya na? If, if, whether that is really the real situation in, here in the Philippines? Uh, women in the Philippines are treated equal. Uh, do we have the existing law that these women are uh, second class citizens? In the Philippines, few women are elected to the board of directors of co-ops. Though studies show that in many cases, women outnumber men in terms of membership, few women are elected leaders. This is especially true in the board of directors where vital decisions for the co-op are made. As a woman, in the board of directors meeting, I'm also frustrated because sometimes we cannot be heard. And because we are minority, so the decision of the majority, which are represented by men, they sometimes follow their decisions. Outvoted in the beginning, gender advocates in the board made little progress. At the heart of the opposition, then, were deep-seated views on the nature of women and what they could or could not do. We men, kami na mga lalaki, kung mag-iyak man kami, grabe na na problema yan. Meaning, as a leader, you have that strong determination. Strong kahit na medyo hirap na hirap ka na, huwag mong ipakikitang hirap ka because you're a leader. And that could not be done by women. Up to this time, this very moment, I will be honest, hindi pa talaga ako believe sa leadership ng mabaya. We cannot just accept the, the fact that women can also be a good leader. Weaker sila eh. Yung kanilang, ang ilang pagbati, weak mong ginaga. Well, when you say leadership, you know, leadership, you will be, uh, para bang maindulge ka ng maraming trials and pagsubok yung as a leader. Ngayon, generally to me, yung mabae, yakin eh. So, in my assessment, hindi pa dapat talaga. It should still, uh, to me, supportive pa muna ang mga babae sa lalaki. That is my assessment. Honestly. Honest to goodness. Talagang ipinaglaban namin kasi talagang nakikita mo na ayaw nila ng development ng women. No? Pero sabi ko, no. That is not correct. We should develop these women. Why? In the first place, it is, it is our social obligation. Do you know that we are committing injustice to these women? Because 65, 65%, anong ginagawa mong proyekto para sa kanila? Wala! Huh? And they're contributing much to the asset of Tagong Cooperative. And what do we give to them in return? Nothing. Ang Biblia na gayon, panggaon ang babae, igugmaon ang babae. Gani ang babae, gilangkat, gikan lang sa gusok sa lalaki. Kunya, karon, mutupong na sa lalaki. Pero sa critical decision, sa ako lang personally, di ko ko pwede nga uh, mulabaw ang babae sa ako. Kung lalaki ako, magkipasuntukan ako sa kanila. Why? Kasi, hindi eh, yung bang nakikita na, pero tinatakpa ng mata, kasi yung the so-called machochism, machochok ako niyan. The boardroom conflicts raged on. Then NATCO, the National Co-op Organization, sponsored a gender awareness training for all board members, including the men. After we learned a lot about these uh, gender issues, especially also that we have attended that gender issues, uh, as a gender sensitivity seminar in Cebu, there was, it, uh, there was a change in the atmosphere in the cooperative. The gender trainings paid off. Through board resolutions, the Tagum directors made a commitment to support a women in development program in their co-op. I direct of this one. I move to adjourn. I second, Mr. Sherman. We have a motion to move to adjourn. We have a second that the general report declared the meeting. But for the two women in the board, the fight is far from over. Every year, they slug it out at meetings to ensure funding for women's programs. With this funding, gender workshops are held in villages so men and women can reflect on and rethink their roles at home and in the community.
Pakapatayin sa unang gigunitan. Diliba na? Unang sa gigunitan? Hindi. Oo, oh, kaya naglip yun na, di ba? Then women are given trainings to enhance their leadership skills. Finally, they are organized and offered loans for livelihood projects. These groups eventually become co-ops like this women's group that produces vinegar. Bali, nakatabang po di pag-ayo sa amo, ah. Kay bisa, kay gani, ni ato ang among mga kababayan, siguro man silang kagalingon doon magpuyo sa ilalang na andan nga gikan sa buong tagad sa hapon. Ang ilalang yung kagalingong balay, ang ilang kinagiman niya. Karun, oh, ni apil-apil lang po sila, nga ka, kuwan ni, nga, medyo nahatagan po doon kuwan ang mga kababayan, nga, inhalan mag-apil-apil po sa kalihokan sa komunidad. Bali ang kuwan ng among mga kaubang kaubayan ang karon lahi na kay sa una nga wala pa ma-organize ang tanhoma kay bahin sa duna pud may ginakuan nga gender gender sensitivity training seminar nga muna tambungan sa Tagum Cooperative But best of all, during pre-membership seminars, gender advocates like Norma Pereiras now have a chance to say their piece. Yoli Tupa is the chairperson of the board of Paxi, a co-op in Palumpon. Together with community organizer Marie Olorvida, he is visiting the fishing village of San Guillermo. Paxi is very much uh, concerned uh, with the with the improvement of the economic life of the people. And we believe that it's through the, the assistance of the Women Project where the economic life of the people will be improved. Yoli Tupa is one of the few board chairpersons who wholeheartedly support women's programs in the co-op. Their co-op, Paxi, is primarily engaged in providing loans to its members. Two years ago, it set up a program for women. The women here are wives of fishermen. To augment the family income, they formed a co-op producing chandeliers made of shells. Paxi helps by marketing these chandeliers. Right in our cooperative, again, uh, we have 70% who are women members. So with this 70%, if all of this 70% will be engaged on economic activities, uh, we can greatly improve our cooperative. And that's what it happened to Paxi. Paxi, before, before it was engaged in uh, the development of women, uh, the growth was very slow. The fast growth of the cooperative only came about when we started with the with the women project. Uh, our our, our co-op's growth will show that in 1990 uh, up to the present, the growth is so fast uh, in terms of additional fixed deposit, in terms of the fixed asset of the cooperative. Why? Uh, because of the women. Because of the women who are already engaged in economic activities and because of their engagement in economic activities, they have also increased their deposit in the cooperative. Tapping women, most of them bound to house chores, has become a strategy Ayaw. for Paxi. Ayo, Mina! Aming buntag, Min! <laughs> Mina Kodera, for example, is a fish vendor. 
the co-op loaned her 2,500 pesos from its special fund for women. Mina used the loan to start a small business selling fish. Every month, Marie from the co-op comes to collect loan payments from her. Mina pays her debt religiously. Her passbook, kept in a trunk with her few precious possessions, bears this out. Through its Cooperative Women in Development Program, or QUID, Baxi was able to tap a whole new sector in the community previously thought to be unbankable. The co-op helps women like Nang Mina earn, but it is also women like her who have helped the co-op grow. Indeed, Paxi's growth in the Palompon community is easy to see. Almost everyone in town who is engaged in small business has a veil of credit from Paxi. Market vendors, sari-sari store owners, even these tricycle drivers. In 1992, Paxi won a national award for outstanding community service. But Paxi also distinguishes itself in other ways. It is one of the few co-ops in the country that run a daycare center. of this cooperative uh, well uh, with my trainings I was so lucky enough to be sent for trainings and one of the trainings that I have undergone is because uh, is regarding the gender issues so when I went back when I went back to the board of directors and then explained what I have undertaken well seemingly those board of directors were not really accepting the idea uh, it's parang joke pa nga na ano ba yung pinag pinaglalaban uh, ng mga babae iba we are also we love women they were even make fans of it so i said uh, so they did not really give uh, importance to it and because of that frustration so i said i may find another way nati did find another way because of the hesitation of their board to integrate gender programs into the co-op she mobilized her resources outside the co-op in 1988, she set up an NGO, the Ilocana Women Development Foundation, or IDF. The IDF, or the Ilocana Women Development Foundation, was set, set up in 1988 to respond to the building up the capability of the women leaders in the province of Ilocosur and La Union. Sitio Buta to deliver farm inputs to the women farmers there. This is the road to Sitio Buta. But with the onset of the typhoon season, roads have been cut off by floods. We are going to Sitio Buta to deliver the rice uh, that they need and for the farm inputs also to visit and to visit the cooperative. Now we are surprised we cannot uh, cross the, the, the road because of this flood. IDF delivers fertilizers and pesticides to women farmers who in turn distribute these to other farmers in the area. But with the roads cut off, this jeep carrying farm inputs must turn back. Nati must turn back as well. 
but she's seen enough of the damage brought by the rains to worry. A village used to stand here, along with farms planted to sugar cane, corn, nuts, and vegetables. When a super typhoon struck the province years ago, vast tracts of farmlands were flooded, houses were swept away, women and children drowned. Nagulat na ako anak ka, dahil mula nung sa pulmula nung maisip na ako eh, noon lang ako nakaranas ng baha, kalalim ng bubog. Ay, ang asawa ko nga kamuntik na lunod, mabotit na kakapit dyan sa mangga. Kumuan ngayon yung mga haligin, kasi ang haligin lang ng bahay namin noon, gaganyan lang ka, liliit. Nagsayaw-sayaw ng ganyan. Nagkuha kami ng kawayan para itong kod para hindi siya matumba dahil wala nga kaming sisulungang iba. Pero ang hangin, masyadong malakas din. Hindi rin pwedeng lagyan ng tungkod yun. Ang ginawa ngayon namin, giniba. Tapos itali dyan sa may mga punong akasya. It seems life has returned to normal for Marcelina and her family. But not quite. The super typhoon swamped her family's croplands. Now she must find another way to feed her mother and children. Nadi and the IDF were one of the first to help the disaster victims in Consuegra. After the initial dole out of relief goods, they organized the women in the community and gave them some means to recover from the loss of their farms. IDF dispersed pigs to be fattened and sold. Then it offered easy credit for the women to keep them away from usurious money lenders waiting to take advantage of the situation. Lastly, IDF revived a tradition in this community. They opened a weaving center which had lain dormant for years. or harvested, women come here to weave. Pillowcases, towels, and blankets are woven using looms passed down from generation to generation. IDF markets their products. The women share whatever profits they make. Nakakatulong ang kook talaga. Dahil kung walang nasasabing kook, mamula. Kung nag-iisa ka lang dyan, nauutang ka lang kung saan hindi kayo bibigyan. Baon ka sa utang kung wala yung kook. Malaking naitulong ng kook. The Ilocana Women Development Foundation is uh, helping, giving, helping the women who are vendors. We are giving them capital for their, uh, to augment their uh, business enterprise and uh, especially to remove them or free them from these uh, five, six lenders that is operating in the area, which we call the Bombay. The Bombay, so-called because of his Indian origins, is a fixture in the public market. There he is in a striped shirt, collecting loan payments from a vegetable vendor who looks rather harassed. It's easy to see why. For every 1,000 pesos he lends, he collects 1,200 pesos every month, a staggering 240% interest rate per annum. The women vendors are perpetually indebted to this usurer. But with no other source of credit, they have little choice but to approach him for capital to run their small business. Then the IDF came and established an operation parallel to the Bombay. They provided loans to market vendors and collected payments every day, just like the Bombay. But while the user charged 240% interest per year, IDF charged only 17%. These women with IDF loans have since formed a cooperative, plowing back loan payments as fresh capital. 
On top of that, they earn patronage refunds. 150 women are now part of the credit cooperative in this market, and more are joining. Nati Makil's strategy for spreading gender awareness is quite unique. First, she fought for women's programs within her co-op. Unable to get the support from within, she set up an NGO outside the co-op. Through this NGO, women were given skills and leadership trainings, loans, and livelihood projects. Then she urged the women to form co-ops of their own and to link up with a more established Tagudin co-op. Encouraged by Nati's success with women's projects, the Tagudin Co-op's board of directors had a change of heart. Today, gender is a part of their pre-membership seminars, and more and more women avail of opportunities within the Co-op. Nati's sojourn has come full circle. to be liberators because we are in the cooperative movement but we ourselves are not really liberated is it why oh look what you are doing you are oppressing the person who is supposed to be your partner in development uh, development is not a monopoly of one one sex or what it is uh, development is a partnership process no? you cannot say really that there is development if, if one is being oppressed and another is an oppressor no? if we say there is development Liberation comes first. When you say liberated, I would believe that you can relate to each other. We're in at an uncall putting ba without one being oppressed and the other an oppressor. Wherever co-ops create more room for women to participate <laughs> through painstaking organizing work to draw women out into the larger world of the community. Through boardroom disputes to give them a voice in making decisions through special loans and assistance to help them realize their potentials or support centers to free them for a few hours from housework. There, co-ops liberate. They liberate communities from the clutches of helplessness and poverty and the men and women who live there from the tyranny of traditional roles that hinder genuine development.